Many moons ago, before the world went into full Bozo the Clown mode, we were mostly in agreement that the kind and caring Labour Party existed to fight for the rights of the working man and woman, whilst the greedy and uncaring Conservative Party existed to lounge around bathing in calves' milk, quaffing flutes of Paul Roger as the poor starved to death. This delicate balance held society together pretty well because it tended to encapsulate most of the political spectrum. And if you found yourself to be politically fluid and weren't sure how you identified on any given day, there was always the Lib Dems. But our friends in the real communism hasn't been tried yet crew are nothing if not resilient in their desire to immiserate the entirety of mankind. And one day they came up with a cunning plan. What if, they schemed to themselves, instead of harping on about socio-economic and class divides, which are real and debilitating societal problems, what if we create a new grievance hierarchy based solely around skin colour? We can stick the terribly white people at the top and the terribly black people at the bottom. Then, wherever you go, you'll be able to tell how oppressed someone is just by looking at them. They all patted themselves on the back and return to their favourite task of dismantling civilization as we know it. There were a few snagging issues, though, to this cunning plan. One being where to put someone like Oprah Winfrey or Meghan Markle or Lewis Hamilton on the list. Privileged black people who have, through hard work in some cases and narcissistic gaslighting in others, won the lottery of life. Where do they fit on this giant grievance hierarchy compared to, say, a supremely white privileged working class kid from Rotherham who will never go to university and whose life opportunities are now bleaker than ever owing to the fact that boring old things like social mobility have given way to the power of melanin. Are Meghan and Lewis and Oprah still oppressed, even though they are million and billionaires? Yes, comes a resounding reply. You have the mystical white privilege, you see, and if you don't see it, then guess what? All together now... You're a racist. This cunning plan took Britain quite by surprise. Britain being a mostly tolerant, accommodating, rather polite place, frequently ranking as one of the loveliest countries to live in on Earth. Just last week, we got a clean bill of anti-racist health from the World Value Study. Well done, us. So, when master racism finder outer, the good Dr Shola plonked herself on any morning TV sofa that would have her and started conjuring racism out of thin air... Decent-hearted Brits couldn't fall over themselves fast enough to apologise profusely for whatever she was moaning was moaning was racist that week. Then they dutifully proceeded to queue up round the block for unconscious bias training, looking deeply into their hearts to see if they were actually racist, but hadn't spotted it yet. The grift has gathered pace, and an entire new class of non-job race commissars infiltrated our national institutions and corporations to make sure that the exact amount of diversity was enforced in all areas of life. And when I say diversity, I don't mean the fun kind, like what goes on in your heart and your soul. I mean the really terribly boring kind, like what colour your skin happened to be when you were born. Dark skin good, light skin bad. And just like that. The entire meritocratic system upon which society had previously depended vanished and was replaced with racialism. It's exactly the same as communism or socialism, it just uses skin colour to get to the utopia instead. Yes, the illusion of capitalism remains, but what dominates is the power and the control. Where a black woman can sit smugly on a chair overlooking the Paris during the coronation, spouting racist drivel about how terribly white the balcony was, to mostly nodding, fawning fools. Terribly white. What an appalling thing to say. She won't be sanctioned in any way. There will be no apologies forthcoming. The BBC nodathon will go, absolutely. But here's an idea. Try swapping the word black for white and see how you get on with some of their terminology. How's your black privilege coming along? You're just full of black fragility and bored of your black tears. You know what I mean? Get the dressed? Racism. So, right, where do we go from here? The ever-simmering resentment at this subjugation of one part of the population to another. What about black people who don't want to play ball with this racist claptrap? Jim Crow in reverse ridiculousness, foisted upon everybody by middle-class white liberal saviours. Well, there is some good news. As always, with our friends on the left, they overreach and have left a rather large loophole in their inconsistent ideology that we our suppressors, can all hop through. It's called identity politics. And you can identify 
how the hell you like. Be a woman if I wanted. You can identify however you like in their clown world. So all of us oppressors, all we need to do, lob a sample of DNA to one of the Ancestry websites, cross your fingers, wait for the results, and there's every chance you'll be at least 3% Ugandan. Buy yourself something a bit tribal. Change your name to Ngozi. Bob's your uncle. We could put an end to this divisive rubbish in a minute. Or we could flip open a Bible, go to Acts 17, verse 26, and remind ourselves of the truth. And he hath made of one blood all nations of men. <laughs>